What's up guys? As you know, reefing ain't easy. And one thing about reefing, if you're doing saltwater aquarium, in my opinion, your reef, your aquarium, it's only as good as your water. And that's the most important thing is having amazing water. Now, if you have a saltwater aquarium and you don't have an RODI unit yet, when you have the money to make an investment, I can say without a doubt, this is gonna be your best investment. I would almost argue, if you're gonna do salt water, you gotta get one of these. You can go get it at your local fish store. You can get RO water from a grocery store and stuff, but uh, I just, to have consistency and the inconvenience of it, I think your success rate is gonna be significantly reduced because it's fun for a month or two, but give it a year, you're not gonna be wanting to haul water around. So I'm gonna give a brief overview of what this is, how it works, how to maintain it, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know about an RODI system. So RO DI stands for, the RO stands for reverse osmosis, and the DI stands for deionization. So basically this would be what you call a six stage. And when you see the different stages, all they're talking about is amount of times the water is filtered. So you see the five here, and then this white guy up here is actually another filter. So if you count them one, two, three, four, five, six, that's why this is called a six stage. If it was a four stage, it has four. Seven stage, it has seven. It's really not that complicated. You don't need to get a six stage. And what's nice about all of these units is you, if you're on a budget, you can definitely start with less stages and build onto it and work your way up. I can easily turn this into a seven stage RODI unit if I want to. So let's talk about how the water actually flows through this system here. So the water actually comes in through these tiny little RO lines. They're a quarter inch line. They're very common, not only in aquariums, but with drinking water. And it goes in this order, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then it goes out. So it comes in on the left side, goes out on the right side. The very first one it goes through is this guy right here, which is called a sediment filter. The next two filters are carbon block filters. Which filters you need is up to debate. It's kind of depends on the source water you're dealing with. They have this thing called micron as a measurement. The lower the micron, the better they are at filtering and usually the more expensive they are. I like to buy my stuff at BRS because they've tested it out for aquariums and I know it works really well. And if you're gonna spend money, this is the place to do it. You can't over filter your water. Basically, you can think of these three things right here as getting the water ready to actually do the reverse osmosis part of this thing. So this right here is the actual reverse osmosis filter. Basically what it is, is a membrane that's rolled up. And the way it works is you have to have pressure. You can see here, I have about, well, maybe 39 now. I need to replace this filter because normally my pressure is higher, but you need to have pressure. And basically you can think of it as there is a sheet and then the pressure of the water is pushing on the sheet. And that sheet is extremely small, so not much particles can get through that sheet. So it pushes up on the water and some of the water gets through. The cleanest water gets through the sheet and the dirty water stays on the side of the sheet that it can't get through and that water actually gets rejected. So it's pushing, if water can get through, great, and that'll go on to the next stage. If it can't, it'll actually get flushed out of the system. So you actually do have a rejection rate and this cord right here is going to a drain. So as you're making water, you have, it splits off into two. You have good water and bad water. And that ratio depends on a lot of things. The, one of the biggest is your actual pressure. The more pressure, the better, but there is a limit. All water pressure that goes to homes, you're not gonna reach that limit. In fact, most homes such as mine would benefit from having a water booster, which basically increases the pressure. But the water pressure, the temperature, the amount of stuff that's in the water, a common way to measure that, it's called TDS, which stands for total dissolved solids. So that's how this actually works. So the reason you wanna filter the water beforehand is we're trying to get out any major particles. And by doing that, you're gonna make this filter last a long time. You know, this filter actually lasts longer than all the filters on here, and it can last years. It really just depends on the initial water that goes into it. So these pre-filters are really gonna help get that water ready to make sure this guy lasts a long time and doesn't have to work as hard. So the water that actually comes out of this filter here, that's reverse osmosis water. So that's RO water. 
and if you want it to be RODI water, this is the final buffering of the stage. Now, if I turn this TDS meter on, luckily, right now, there is a, a right here is my line one. It's measuring, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up well, but zero TDS. And I am very, very fortunate. I live in a part of the country that has some of the best drinking water straight out of the tap anywhere in the US at least. Because of that, there's actually a lot of breweries where I live just for that reason. When you turn the system off for a long time and it sits there, there are particles basically kind of on the membrane because they're being pushed onto the membrane and now they have a chance to kind of come off. That's referred to as TDS creep and is why. When you first turn this on, you want to flush, which basically there is a switch right here and when I turn that, you might be able to hear it, you'll see my pressure drops down to zero. What this is doing is allowing water to not push through this membrane anymore, but it's flushing the water out of the membrane and it'll prolong the life of the membrane. And then I can start adding pressure again, so now it's actually doing the reverse osmosis. All right, now that the reverse osmosis is done, the reason you go through the DI really polishes the water and gets you some of the best, cleanest water possible because there are actually particles that are so dissolved into the water and they're so small that even the best, smallest filter, that RO filter, they still pass right through. It's kind of like if you think about it on a more of a macro level, if you put dirt in water, and then you use you know, a coffee filter and you pour the water through the coffee filter, all the dirt stays on the surface. However, some of that dirt is actually dissolved in the water and it's taken on the properties of the water so it actually slides right through the filter. Because some particles do pass through the reverse osmosis filter to give the final polish and remove as much as possible, you need to deionize the water by passing it through the last two chambers. There's two particles within these that have a bit of a charge. It's a cation and an anion. And what they're doing is, it's almost like magnets. The particles that are in the water are attracted to them and they bind to them. Now, these two here, it's a very common setup. It's basically both the anion and the cation are mixed together and the water passes through it at once. BRS made a great video that showed if you actually have a three stage, you can get the water a little bit cleaner. And basically what they do is they still have one of these filters on the end, but then one filter is the cation, one filter is the anion, and then it goes through that third filter again that has both of these. Ironically, if you didn't have that third filter on there, this is actually a better solution than just having the two and then going out there. I won't get into the specifics of that in this video, and honestly, I can't even remember why, but I do know there's a reason for it. But with how clean my water is, I haven't made the investment to do that. I don't even know if I ever will because my water is so clean. I've had an ICP tested before, pretty much has nothing in the water, down to the parts per billion, so it's just not an issue that I come across with this setup that I have. Now, this is a color changing substance, and you can actually see the bottom part of this is brown and the top part is kind of a grayish bluish color. When enough particles are attracted to that and stick to it, it basically gets full and it lets you know that it's no longer working because of a color changing dye and it changes it to brown. So this will slowly come up and turn brown. Now you actually don't need, this could easily be a five stage filter and I don't need this extra one here. But the reason you do that is I know I can confidently go through all of this because as you start to get to the top and it gets really close to being extinguished, you really don't want to take the risk. So you are going to undo this and you're going to waste a little bit of the uh, DI resin. This way I can go all the way up to the top. I could even let it go a little bit further and start affecting this guy. Then I also have more time. It's not something that I urgently need to take care of, but I'll basically move this filter over here so it's the first one. I'll empty the stuff in here, refill it back up and attach it to here and repeat the process. So that's great, it changes color. I can tell what's happening here. Now, how do I know when the reverse osmosis part is no longer doing its job? One way is this TDS reader and right here when it comes out of here, mine reads zero. After a little bit of time, when you first turn it on, there is some TDS creep and it's gonna be up, but it'll eventually go back to down to zero, at least for me with the water quality that I have. And you'll know yours, you know, if it gets to one or two coming out of here and that's your standard, it's good. Now, when you see that start to climb up, when it starts to have more than just 
whatever your normal TDS is. That's how you know your reverse osmosis is no longer working. This filter right here is when you see the TDS increase there. Now, how do you know when these pre-filters are no longer doing their job? And one tall tale sign is your water pressure drops. Now I'm gonna go ahead and replace all three. I bought this system used. He also gave me these as well. So I don't know the history of these. So just to be safe, I'm gonna replace all three and it's pretty natural that the first one goes first, then the second one, then the third one. That can be a little bit varied. These are all one micron. So I explained how the water gets through in here. Let me explain how the water goes through these canisters. All right, so the way that these filters work is the water is coming in from the left side. When it comes in, it's allowed to go onto the outside of this canister and the outside of this filter. You can see the water is starting to fill up on the outside here. Once it fully fills up, there's pressure pushing this water and there's nowhere else for the water to go. So what it does is it surrounds this filter and now it has pressure pushing in and the water goes through the filter and gets to the inside of the filter. Now, there is an out port that is on the right side of these and the out port is connected to the middle part of this filter. You can see there's a rubber gasket that doesn't allow the water to transfer. So then it pushes out through the middle and then it goes and repeats the process. So let's watch this happen. You can see water's filling this canister up. It's going to fill it all the way up and then it's going to pressurize. Then it's going to go through the filter and then come out and repeat the process here. So see it fills it all the way up and now water has actually passed through the filter and repeats the process here. The way the water flows through the DI canisters is like this. The water flows basically comes around the outside of this plastic shell, comes up through the bottom of the shell because you're pushing water into the system, has nowhere to go but up, then it comes up and passes through this shell here, comes out the top.